Thank you for watching, everyone. This podcast is a co-production between Edisonenfant.com and La Fondation Jeune en Tête. I am presently with Julie, a PhD student who specializes in violence and peer relationships, and we are talking about school prevention and how to intervene. Julie, tell me, um, what is the role of the school in a situation of intimidation? Well, in the school, they have to or they should, I mean, they, their role is to intervene as soon and the, as there's an aggression, mm. okay? So it's not even waiting till the intimidation occurs because intimidation is a repetition of the aggression. So as soon as, there, as there's an aggression, the actors of the school and the, the people that work in the school has to intervene right away to make it stop. Um, they have to to also have a follow-up of the actions with the author and the victim and sometimes even the witness because they want to support everybody, okay? It's not just the, the, the victim that wants to be supported, but also the author because the author might, might need uh, extra help with the social skills, let's say, or uh, how to uh, enter in a relationship with someone else that, without being aggressive. Uh, as a parent, though, Our role is to uh, keep contact with the school, collaborate with the school all the time. So if you hear your child saying, look, I'm, I'm victim or I'm witness of intimidation, then you have to contact the school as soon as possible with his or her uh, own approval. Um, approval. Thank you. Because if the kids don't want to act, don't want to do anything because he's been trying to solve the problem by himself, then doing something for him will take away his control and he will feel more victimized. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, we had Maxime tell her story to us of intimidation and she wrote a letter that she put in a box at school Uh, when she first started high school and she never got a response. Uh, what should we do if the school is not responding? Well, as a parent, we need to sit down with our child and see what actions the, the child wants to take. Okay. And if, a, if for example, if Maxime wrote a letter to, to the school and get any response, Well, the school should have another way to respond to students so that Most if definitely. this happens, there should be, for example, one person who is uh, the, the leader of, uh, the, for example, uh, intervening in intimidation so that you know that if you're living through uh, aggressions or constant intimidation, then you know who to go to talk to. We should intervene calmly by getting your child to describe the situation, his emotions, um, his thoughts, and what he has tried to do or wants to do. That's right. the first. The second step is to decide with your child what actions he wants to take next. Your child might say the first time, I want to handle it by myself. And as a parent, you have to respect that. And say, okay, fine, it's good. It's good that you want to handle the situation by yourself, but just know that I'm here if ever it doesn't work. And we can take other steps after afterward if you wanna if you wanna make the situation stop. If you intervene too much, if you intervene without his approval, you will make him feel like he might lose the situation of this, uh, the, the lose the control of the situation, and the situation might worsen. So it's not a good feeling for him. Third, you need to decide together which adult you will inform and seek help. All right. Fourth, you need to uh, contact the problematic milieu because sometimes it's not the school. Sometimes it's, uh, for example, at the skate park or it's at the tennis course or mm. it's uh, on the internet. So who do you want to who do you want to address? the situation with and you need to contact the problematic milieu to have a better uh, point of view of the situation and choose the right, right action to take together with your child should Again, we be contacting uh, the intimidator the intimidator directly or not necessarily 
I wouldn't recommend Soul, okay? Because uh, sometimes it's a misunderstanding or you don't understand what is the, the cause of the problem. I think that if you sit down with the milieu, with the people that are involved in the situation, uh, not involved in the situation, but with the situation, then you will have a better picture of what's going on. For example, how often it's happening, where it's happening, with like who is involved, so that you will get a better point of view and a, you can make a better plan of what to do with this situation. All right. Uh, you Once you decide that and what to do, you verify if the situation has improved and that's very important. And you stay in contact with the milieu. Because if it didn't improve, you need to take more action. You need to go back and ask for more help. Wow, that sounds good. So those are many steps that we should take with our child. That's a concrete plan. I like that. Are there other things that we can do on a daily basis to prevent yeah. intimidation from happening? Well, there, there's one there's one thing. There's many things you can do on a daily basis to present, prevent intimidation. But one of the things that has been proven by the science, I would say, and by the practice as well, is that if you teach your child social and emotional competencies, mm. it will help your it will help the author of the intimidation, it will help the witness, the accolade, and the victim. So it will help all the the everybody's on everybody on the scene of the aggression because social and emotional learning can help your your child gain self-confidence learn to identify his emotions assert himself positively uh learn how to make friendships and keep them and uh how to uh take take good decisions as well in the end, as parents, we have to be open to what our child are going through with their friends. And we have to stay open-minded, very uh, supportive and calm when it comes to aggression and intimidation so that your child will feel like they can trust you and they can confide in you. And together, you will find a way to, to end the situation. I like that. So let's be a team with our child. Let's also be the coach of their emotions. Let's do that. Julie, thank you so much for your expertise. Thank you for, for your participation. This has been very insightful. Um, for all the parents who are watching, there will be a list of available resources on the page of this podcast if your child is going through such a situation. Again, thank you, Julie. You're welcome. 